I'll be tying the Normwood special today. This imitates a golden stone and it's been really effective. The hook I'll use, let me put one in the vise. I'm using a Daiichi 1270, size 8. The thread is some Danville 6 aught in an orange color. I'll start the thread about at the spot where I'll, where I'll tie in, end up tying in the wing and make a, a little bit of a coating of thread for the thread body. For the rib, some fine wire gold. And I tie this in on the opposite side of the hook for me. Secure it. And I'll come back up to a point where I want my body to end. The body is a combination mixture, a custom mixture that I use. I start with some orange ice stub. Add a little bit of Hair's Ear Plus Rusty Orange. And finish it off with some STS Trilobal only I use a uh, olive brown. I didn't have any more of that color to show you, but it would be an olive brown. I mix those together, and this is what it looks like. If you've tried to dub with either the trilobal or the ice dub, it can be difficult to put around the thread. And the hair's ear combination that I use seems to bind a little bit easier. So I'll start to dub my body and I'll just use a little bit of dubbing at a time. Squeeze and go one direction. I'm going clockwise here. It slides around the thread quite a bit. Once you get it anchored, you can grab onto the end and twist it, and it should tighten up. And you'll see it separates at times too. But I'll continue to dub. I'll anchor that piece of the dubbing so it doesn't slide around on the thread too much. And just continue to go up and down the thread and tighten your dubbing. Go down to where I tied in. And that's a point about in the middle between the barb and the hook point. So this is a curved shank hook. And I don't want to go down around the end too far. I'll keep applying more dubbing. And the trick to this is not using too much dubbing at a time. Trying to create a taper, somewhat of a tapered body. I'll put a little bit one more time, a little bit more. That ought to work. Now you notice that there's some longer pieces of dubbing, and I'll just trim that to a little, a little bit. That's not critical by any means. A fish's tooth will probably do the same thing, pull some out, but that's that's fine. Clean that up just a tiny bit. 
I'm, I'll put in a hackle that'll go backwards, and I'm just using a brown hackle. And this is a, the size 8 hook, and I'm using a size 14 hackle. So I like to undersize the, the body hackle on this. I'll trim off a little bit of the, the hackle for a tie-in point. Pull off some of the barbs. And I will tie that in. One wrap in front, one wrap behind. That will secure it in a few more wraps and come back to my tie-in point. So I wrap this back, make a couple of wraps right at the front, and then five to seven wraps kind of equally spaced as we go towards the butt of the fly. And my rib material will secure the hackle then. And I'll make one wrap there to hold it. And as I come forward, I'll jiggle the wire back and forth and I'm trying to cross with my wire each wrap of hackle as I'm going backwards. It's not critical, but uh, I like to have a nicely tied fly. And yes, this is a dry fly and we're using wire on it, but the wire is very fine and shouldn't add much weight to it at all. Make four or five wraps, come in here and you can clip that with the inside of your of your scissors. Just push forward to trim that piece. And I'll cut at an angle where the wing will go. And that will just allow the wing to lie a little flatter. Norm Wood was a guide on the Deschutes River and he came up with this pattern. This is a, we'll be using for the wing, a calf tail that's dyed. They call it Normwood Special Color. And I've got my calf tail I've been working on here. You'll notice I've tied a few of these, so I'll come down here to the, to the thickest part and pull these fibers out. Calf tail is not the easiest to tie with. And what I want to do here is pull the fibers out so I try to align the tips as much as possible. I don't stack this. I'll take about that much and trim it close. how my wing will look. I want to pull the, some of the fuzz out of here. That will prevent me from securing it to the hook. And you can just go back and forth and that should take most of the fibers out. Get my garbage can back out of the way. <clears throat> And these are pretty well stacked, but if you want to hand stack it, just pull some of the long fibers out and then just put them on top, and rotate. I'm just taking my thumb and forefinger and my thumb and forefinger here, alternating where I, where I grab it. I'll line it the way I want. That would be my wing right there. I want to take those longer fibers out and we'll put it on top here. Okay, I'll take it and mount it on top. I want it a little bit past the bend of the hook and get my thread back to the 
right at the edge of the body. And as I hold it with my thumb and forefinger, I'll take my other hand, bring it in with my thumb, and I'll make a notation where my thumbnail is right here, and I'm going to come in and trim it at an angle like this. And that will become evident in a moment why. So let me just remeasure the length. Bring my thumb in, and that's my point where I'll start to make a cut right here. You notice it's shorter on the bottom than it is on top. And the reason I do that is not to create as much bulk. So I'm flattening my thread. Make a couple of loose wraps, pull down tight, and then secure it. And take my thumb and spread the wing out so it goes around the hook a little bit. And hopefully that will secure. So you notice that there's not a lot of under coating or uh, thickness of the extra calf tail and then a big bump right at the end. So that's a nice way to make a taper. My Danville thread is lightly waxed, but you could certainly put a little bit of wax on it to help bite as you try to secure that calf tail. Calf tail is very slick and is hard to deal with at times. So I'll tie in a feather for the for the thorax area, and this is about a size 10, so I like to undersize it. Again, I'll get down to a tie-in point, take some of the barbules off, and I'll tie it in right at the base of the wing. I'm leaving a little bit of bare stem or rachis right at the front. You'll notice I put a a wrap on top, one behind, and that locks it in, and then continue down. If I pull this out, and I have a 90 degree from my, my hook then. We'll use the same dubbing. And you don't want a lot of dubbing in the thorax area. You notice I've got a taper, so I need to keep that in mind, and a thin noodle of dubbing works much better at this point. So I start a little bit behind the eye. I want to keep that area clear for my tie-off point. And I'll come behind the wing, or the, tie, the hackle, Come forward. That's pretty close. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more. And just squeeze and twist and see how tight that is. Go back one, wrap. Pull those fibers back and end at a tie-off point. You'll notice I still have a few longer fibers. I'll just clean those up a little bit. Again, I don't know if that makes a lot of difference, but I do it anyway. And I want to make uh, the best site I like is five wraps. kind of evenly spaced. And I come and round the last time, pull it straight up, bring my thread, pull the hackle tip forward. That exposes just the rachis, so it's opening up those fibers, and I can put the, the thread right between the fiber 
and I'm not creating as much of a have as, have so many of the fibers moving forward then if you have a problem with tying those off use a your three fingers thumb and two fingers pull it that back and I'll start to tie that off I have one extra Flatten my thread. My thread is right at, at the back where that feather is. And I'll make it five churn whip finish moving forward. And pull it tight. Looks like I got one barbule. And use the edge of your scissors to cut your thread and then I can pull my hackle off. That is the Normwood Special. The last step I do is take my scissors and make a cut so it label life just flat. Flat on the water. So I hope you like that. If you do, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'll have a link to the fly pattern sheet. I also highlighted this as a throwback Thursday fly on my Riverkeeper Fly website with explaining a little bit more of the history of the fly and Norm Wood. So I hope you like that and I'll see you soon.